Uh, so to our listeners today, we got Jordi Belfiore from uh, Suma Silver, uh, trading symbol SSVR in the TSX Venture Exchange. And uh, they've got a, a couple of great historical um, high-grade silver assets, one in Nevada and one in New Mexico, that they continue to put out some really good drilling results. So Jordi, 20 minutes or so, and then we'll we'll address some questions from the audience. All right. Appreciate the introduction, Arlen. It's a pleasure to speak alongside some other great companies here. So Suma Silver Overview. This is a company now that was founded back in May of 2020, so about four years old now, with a focus of going into these old historic mining districts and applying a new modern focus. So both projects saw substantial production in the early 1900s, but little to no modern exploration until our workings. So the first project I'll talk about is the Maguillon project in Southwest New Mexico. That's because we just wrapped up our drill program there a few weeks back. And our second project being in central Nevada, the Hughes project halfway between Reno and Las Vegas. Uh, quickly introduce the team, Galen McNamara, he's our CEO and founder. He's a geologist by trade going back about 20 years. A lot of his exploration success came with some of the majors like Hecla, or sorry, a lot of his exploration success came uh, managing all the drilling at next gen between 2014 and 2018 when they made their big era, arrow discovery. Uh, myself, Jordy, I handle all the investor relations and corporate development. Uh, Christopher Leslie, he's a senior geologist for us. He co-discovered the Blackwater Gold Deposit in BC. I believe that's Artemis Gold now is advancing that project into construction. Uh, Chris York, he's our VP of exploration. He uh, brings a lot of valuable experience from Nevada exploration, working with Hecla and Barrick, running their exploration programs. And Michael Connert is the CEO and founder of Beasley Resources. Uh, he's had some tremendous success, taking a very similar approach to us actually down in Mexico. They now have built up a 325 million ounce silver resource. Uh, why silver? I'll just touch on these really quickly. Uh, we see with this chart on the right that we've seen crazy supply shortages happen in 2021 and 2022 relative to the past decade. Uh, a lot of that actually has to do with you know, some of the solar demand that we've seen and other electrification angles. Uh, we've also seen, you know, this current silver to gold mine supply ratio of seven to one when the price ratio is 85 to one. These are really historic times in terms of that gold to silver ratio that we've seen. And then not to mention, we also have um, silver being a continued value as a hedge against monetary instability and uh, inflation, which is pretty important, especially in today's economy with inflation still being very, very high. Uh, cap structure, these are all Canadian figures, just for your reference. Uh, recent share price being about 42 cents. Uh, 104 million shares outstanding gives us a fully diluted of about 128 million. Uh, no debt, and we have about $4 million right now in working capital. So relatively well financed for the short and medium term. Uh, just to give you some context of shareholders, Eric Sprott is our largest he owns about 18% of the company. Management Insiders Close Associates own about 22. Uh, I'll also note First Majestic Silver is a shareholder. And then the remaining structure is split somewhere between 25% uh, retail and about 25% high net worth uh, retail. Uh, also, last thing I'll note here, analyst coverage, research capital covers us with a $2 price target. Okay, the Muggion project. So this is the project in Southwest New Mexico. Uh, like I mentioned, it's a historic past producer up until 1942. And production then only shut down because that's when we went into World War II and all silver and gold production was halted. Uh, it was about 16 and a half million ounces of silver, 340,000 ounces of gold at grades of about 800 grams per ton silver equivalent. And just to, for context, whenever we say silver equivalent, that's just silver and gold. We don't factor in uh, copper, lead, zinc, anything else like that. Uh, but, you know, what have we done recently? We like to say some things here like underexplored, unfinished business, multiple targets. But what really puts us all into perspective is that this project has about 77 kilometers of vein and structure on it. And right now we're just focused on two kilometers of it. And for two main reasons, the first being we have really good historic data. So it allows us to come in and start drilling high grade holes right away. And B, it um, is on private and patented land, so it gave us a really good head start in the permitting process. Uh, it really only took us a matter of months to 
get fully permitted for drilling. Uh, just to give you a quick idea of some of the drill results that we have done to date, I don't want to bore you in all these numbers, but um, our best hole here being about 31 meters of 448 grams per ton silver equivalent. Uh, we followed that up with 433 over 23.2. Um, and then we also have a high grade kicker down here, 640 grams per ton over 9.9 .9 meters. Uh, just to give you a quick map of where we are here in New Mexico, the Mogollon Project in southwest New Mexico here. Uh, this is actually an area that we're starting to see significant more mining activity. Right here is an open pit copper mine with uh, Freeport McMorrin's Morency mine. Uh, there's another two just to the south of us, about an hour. Uh, Chino and Tyrone also run by Freeport McMorrin. Okay, just another map here of the project. Um, as you can see, we have great road access. There's actually a highway that cuts right through the middle of it, gives us great access to water, power, infrastructure. Uh, there's just a little town over here where the guys stay at site. So keeps our costs really low and we have great access like this. Okay, here's another map of the project and all these red lines that we see here at surface, those are the veins we've actually mapped out. So when I said there was 77 kilometers of vein, Earlier, this is what I was talking about. We can actually view this underground as well. Um, but the two kilometers that we're focused in on right now is just this area right here where I'm hovering with my mouse. That's that area on private land where we've been drilling. And it's really been about developing a story here for the last couple of years of showing a, criti a, a pathway to a critical mass over this two kilometers where we can hopefully become attractive to a major or bigger institution to that point. Uh, I'll zoom in underground here to highlight some of the drilling that we've done. So this is the first target area called the consolidated mine. This is the first 500 meters of strike length of that two kilometers. All the white stuff that we see in here, these are the old stopes that were actually mined out. Um, and like I said, it gave us a great roadmap to come in and drill holes right away. Uh, cumulatively between the drilling we've done and some historic holes, it's about 25 holes that we have done here. Uh, off to the right here is that 31 meters of 448 grams per ton. Uh, over here, we have some higher grade numbers at 640 over 9.9. But again, like I mentioned here, it's, it's about more than just this 500 meter target area. Uh, it's about stepping back now and looking at this full two kilometers where we see three other target areas of similar flavor. Clifton, Everly, and Deadwood. Um, all three of them have similar degrees of historic data to go off of. Uh, we see anywhere here between hundreds of grams per ton to thousands of grams per ton in, in underground samples that we've taken. Now, just to give you an idea of what we're chasing here, I don't really like to throw out numbers that much, but at this consolidated mine, I, I can feel pretty confidently that we're in the tens of millions of ounces range. And if we can start to demonstrate that at these other three target areas, well, very easily we can show that path to a critical mass. So the first hole of our last drill program was done just between Deadwood and Everly, uh, right here where my mouse is, and that drilled about 700 grams per ton over four meters. Um, and that was kind of a proof of concept of what we're doing here is working. It's about stepping out up to about a kilometer and a half now from the heart of the district to show that sense of scale. Right now, we have two other holes pending in the labs, both under the Everly mine right here. Um, and I see that as being an immediate catalyst over the next couple of weeks. So hopefully we can share that uh, relatively soon. And again, just stepping back and looking at this map again, just to put things into perspective, that area of drilling where that two kilometers is right here where I'm piloting my mouse. Okay, the Hughes project. This is the project in central Nevada in the historic Tonopah district where we have the eastern half. Uh, I think right now we're probably a little bit more well known for it at this time, just because we've done substantially more drilling at it, about 64 holes now in total. Uh, similar to New Mexico, it was also a past producing area, about 175 million ounces of silver, 1.9 million ounces of gold at grades of about 1200 grams per ton silver equivalent. So again, very, very high grade. Uh, some of the highlight drilling that we've done here so far, almost 4,000 grams per ton over 2.8 meters, 536 over 18. 
And then more recently in a, in about a kilometer and a half step out in our last exploration drill program, we drilled 1,450 grams per ton over three meters. Um, and I view that as a, a true new discovery that we made. Unfortunately, we're in tough markets right now and uh, we didn't get a ton of love for it in the market, but it was a, a big milestone for the company to hit that. Uh, but again, there's too many numbers here that we're throwing out, but to kind of put this into better perspective is this project has about a six and a half kilometer trend. We have about a half dozen targets across all of them. And uh, we've drilled extensive, or sorry, extensive high grade mineralization at all six of those targets so far. Okay, I wanna look and focus in on this map here off to the right. Uh, these are all the target areas that we have. Murray and Belmont, where we see it says extensive mineralization. These are the two target areas that were in the heart of the district, part of all the past production. And all these targets out here that we see to the east were never drilled and never mined. Okay, again, now we're just looking at a long section view of this. Um, where I'm highlighting with my mouse here, this rectangle, this again is the heart of the district. And again, it's where we've done the bulk of our drilling so far because it gave us that great roadmap to come in and start drilling high grade numbers right away. But the real story here in Tonopah now is this Halifax fault. This runs north south. Um, and I, like I said, everything out here to the east was never drilled or mined until our workings. And the veins here, they start here at Murray and they run out to the east horizontally. But as they approach this Halifax fault zone, the veins dove underneath of it. And the old time miners in 1910, 1920, they were never able to follow up on those veins on the other side of the fault zone. You can imagine with limited technology, they just didn't have, have the means to follow them. But today when we have geophysics, IP surveys, uh, we can do geochemistry at surface to better define all these targets. And that's exactly what we did. Uh, the last program we did tested this Ruby target, which is probably the one that we like the most here. And that's where we hit that 1,450 grams per ton over three meters. Um, and then even if you step out another kilometer and a half here to where the Sapphire target is, uh, we drilled 376 grams per ton over a meter and a half in a wildcat style hole. Um, and again, these numbers aren't going to shoot the lights out necessarily, but as we've now stepped back and looked at this full six and a half kilometer trend, um, we can sh show that this Ruby target and even the Sapphire one here are great proof of concept to the vein continuity happening from the heart of the district well out um, six and a half kilometers to the east and things still at that point remain open. Okay, just jumping down to our district comparison. How does Tonopah compare to some of these famous Mexican districts that were in production going back up into the 1500s? Well, if over a four kilometer strike length in Tonopah, this is how many were how many ounces were produced. Uh, you know, we compare that to Guanajuato, Sandy Mass, or Pachuca. They all had much greater strike lengths, and intuitively they were able to produce many, many more ounces. But if we come down here and we look at that four kilometers in Tonopah, stretch it out a kilometer and a half to where we hit at Ruby, um, even tack on another 1.2 kilometers to where we hit at Sapphire. Well, we can see how well we fit in with some of these Mexican districts when they get to be of true, true, true world-class scale um, of strike lengths of seven kilometers and, and beyond. Footprint comparison. So how do we stack up with some of our much, much more well-advanced peers such as Silvercrest, First Majestic, and Vizsla? Uh, well, all three of these projects, the Las Chipas, San, uh, <clears throat> Las Chipas uh, the Sandy Mass, and the Panuco projects, they're all down in Mexico. They have similar style vein systems as us, uh, low sulfidation epithermal veins. Uh, they're all in past producing areas, um, similar to us, except for we're in the United States. Uh, we have one again in New Mexico, one in Nevada, and two great chances to make uh, world-class discoveries. And I think it is worth noting, you know, take a look at a silver crest, go back to, I think it was 2014 when they were a $15 million market cap. And as they've continued to hit and, and execute, they've generated well over a billion dollars in shareholder value over the years. And that's the kind of swing that we're taking here is looking for those next hundred plus million ounce high grade deposits uh, in the United States. Work program <clears throat> over the next year. So like I mentioned, we finished drilling in 
New Mexico at the end of February. Uh, we released our first hole from that program uh, a couple of weeks back, and we have two more holes that we're planning to put out in the near term, uh, which I see as immediate catalyst for us. And then from there, we're probably going to actually take a few months off drilling. Uh, we've now been drilling for about four years straight since our inception, so it's a good opportunity for us to take a step back and kind of just take stock of what we've done, uh, continue to redefine our targets. And then at that point, I think we'll return to, to Hughes where we plan to follow up on some of those exploration holes that we drilled last year. The opportunity. So I think one last note that I want to leave this pitch on is that silver deposits where silver's the, the main commodity are actually quite rare. Uh, silver deposits that are high grade in good jurisdictions like the United States are even more rare. Uh, and then when you combine that with us having a very experienced management team in terms of discovery success, um, a share structure with you know only 105 million shares outstanding with some very loyal shareholders, I think we're a true unique opportunity right now to the market. Uh, and that's the Suma Silver pitch in about 15 or 20 minutes or so. Awesome. Thanks, Jordy. How much cash do you guys got right now? Right now, we have about $4 million. Uh, our burn rate right now is about hundred to $130,000 a month uh, while we're not drilling. So we have the ability to <clears throat> stretch us out for quite a while if we need to. Yeah, yeah. Then, yeah that's... Um, yeah, that's, that's the one thing I've actually always been impressed by Galen. Um, he he does a really good job at managing his his cash. Absolutely, like he really does. Um, oh. so that experience is is paying off. Where do you when do you see or when can you envision like uh forty three one one resource estimates on on either one of your projects? Are you is, is that something you're planning for this year, or are you just as long as you continue to drill and add more ounces, like? Yeah, it's an interesting. Um, it's, it, it's a question that we revisit quite often. It's we're in a conundrum because we keep stepping out at both of these projects, both at Hughes and Mogion. Mogion, we just stepped out a kilometer and a half mm -hmm. and, and hit a really high grade hole. Last program in Tonopah, we were drilling up to three kilometer step outs from the heart of the district. So when we keep stepping out like that, it, it's hard for us to justify putting out a resource estimate, um, from where we've done the bulk of our drilling, because it just doesn't really show the proper scale that we have at either one of these projects. Um, but we also, we, we understand that being a junior mining company resource estimate is the next step in the road of our path. So it's really balancing both of those things. And I think when we look at how some of our peers are trading that do have resources um, and when the market starts to pick up and when we've started to wrap our arms a little bit more around the drilling that we've done, then I think we'll put one out. So I think in the near term, I don't really see one um, coming out, but in the next year or so, potentially, yes. Yeah. Well, the Black Rock's right beside you. That's right. Um, in Tonova. How many ounces did they put out in their 43101? They did just over 100 million ounces at 508 grams per ton silver. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Be interesting to see how, how how the two projects play out down the road on that, in my opinion. Um, okay. So, so you're going to take a few months off just to kind of reevaluate all your drilling data. You, you talked about maybe go up a few slides. Um, you said you got a couple more holes coming, uh, pending. Can yes. you kind of just show on the map where they were drilled? Absolutely. So here's the consolidated target where we've done drilling in the prior years. Like I mentioned, these are the results. And mm -hmm. then this over here is the first hole, uh, outside of the consolidated target that we drilled. Yeah, uh, this yeah. was 1.4 kilometer step out. Uh, like I mentioned, it was about 400 grams per ton over seven meters. Um, and then the other two holes are going to be about four to 500 meters to the north of that, right in this area here. Okay. <clears throat> did you make that uh, map? Did you make that map yourself, Jordy? If so, I'm really impressed. I absolutely did not. <laughs> <laughs> No, the uh, I, I love these three D models that these new new like leapfrog and verify do. I, it just it just makes such a good visual, absolutely. Um, you absolutely. know, for inv investors to take a look at. Um, okay, so you got lots of money in the bank, but you won't be drilling for a while. And then, so um, how, how's permitting? Do you have to go back and re permit the next set of drill programs, or are you fully permitted just to keep going? Um, okay, so in Nevada, um, where we've drilled on private and patented land, uh, we don't even need a drill permit there. 
Um, and then some of the other targets that we've drilled out to the east, like Ruby and those ones, uh, those are on BLM land and we got those all permitted. That uh, was pretty easy. I think it took us about three weeks. Mm -hmm. And then in New Mexico, we're still operating under the same PAR-3 minimal impact exploration permit, um, which I think it took us more in the months range, three to four months to, to have that, but we're still operating under it and it's still valid. Yeah. Okay. Um, I was just in Tonopah. And yeah, uh, nice. doing 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 a mindsight visit of a, of our next presenter, actually Scorpio Gold, and right. it bl blew my mind the mining infrastructure in that town. Right, like Absolutely. like right behind the Misba Hotel, where like mine workings. It's like totally. the town is in the mine workings. It's wild, and uh, yeah. you know we were there and talking to the servers and you know the people that work in the town. They're like, oh yeah, you guys must be geologists, right? Or you guys, yeah, yeah. <laughs> they, they know that anyone that's coming there is is in the mining sector. But yeah, it, it really blew my mind. Just like that town is mining. But yeah, period. it's a tremendously rich history of mining there. I know even when I walked around there, I think it was a year or two ago, um, a lady that worked in the town had approached me and just asked us, you know, when are you guys going to be in production? Like, we can't wait to have another mine operating in the town. And that just kind of shows you how rich that history is when it, when it's it, as embedded deeply as that. It, it's, it's, it's shocking. And they know how important it is for their economy. Absolutely. Like, they just, they know, like, they need it. Right. It's, yeah. I, I wouldn't say it's a wealthy town right now. <laughs> <laughs> Certainly. <laughs> yeah. Um, but yeah, no, it, it's, it's great to have that kind of kind of kind of support from your local community. Awesome. Sure. Um, well, I think that ties it up for the questions here, Jordi. Uh, great job today. Excellent, excellent work. And uh, thank you for the update on that. If anyone has any questions, uh, type them in the Q&A and we'll get answers back to you. And uh, of course, uh, Jordi's always available if you want to reach out to him, too, with any further questions from there. So. For sure. Appreciate uh, you having us on, Arlen. Uh, good yep. luck with the rest of the conference, everyone. Thank you very much. Thanks, Jordy.